Well, this video is not only going viral all over the internet, but it really is the clear, significant evidence that Bud Light is cratering. Guys, this is so funny and bizarre. Look at that. That is the Bud Light, that is every single Bud Light stand here at Fenway Park in Boston, right? We're at the Red Sox game. That's, that's what the Bud Light cans are. Holy crap. They're in trouble. I mean, I guess marketing has some questions to answer. Fenway Park. That's Boston. Boston's not exactly what you would call a conservative haven. And yet, no one in liberal Boston is buying Bud Light. What's really going on? What's the deeper aspect of this that goes beyond Dylan Mulvaney and strikes really at the heart of of the LBGTQA plus one, five, six, seven, whatever they call themselves this week. How is this an actual dismantling of their agenda? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hey, this is Pastor Marty. Thank you so much for checking out the Afternoon Drive right here on YouTube. Make sure you're a subscriber to the channel, smack the bell, click the word all to get notification of all of my rants. I know, this is a video clip that literally every conservative commentator has already given their opinion on and commented on. And we could sit here and we could talk about the numbers as far as the percentage of sales drop for Bud Light affecting all of the Anheuser-Busch products. I'm going to put all that to the side because there's something deeper here that I don't know if anybody else is talking about because I don't have a lot of time to, to listen to everybody else's stuff. But I, I noticed something about this that I find very significant. And I think it's the reason the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing and the, 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 the immediate backlash to Bud Light over this was so big and so now what we would call literally consuming. This was not just a passing fad. This is, this is a huge, true, honest pushback. And it's a permanent pushback. And I want to explain exactly why I believe that is. In just about a month or so, we are going to be treated to Pride Month. You know, that month out of the year where we celebrate who an individual decides to have sex with. And that's really what it's about. I don't know that we honor any other group for an entire month based on who they engage in private, personal, intimate relationships with. But of course, we couldn't just have a, quote, Pride Day. We have to have a month, and we have to signify it by stealing a biblical symbol, the rainbow, which was a sign that God gave that uh, never again would he uh, destroy the earth through a flood, and we misappropriate it, and we hijack it for a political left agenda, and everybody from Anheuser-Busch to Coca-Cola to every uh, major corporation in America will have a rainbow logo. Funny thing is, though, when they export their products to other countries, yeah, they're not exporting the rainbow. That, that is interesting, especially over in Muslim countries. They certainly don't put any of their logos in a rainbow format. Kind of, kind of funny how that works, isn't it? And really, there has been this idea that the American people have overwhelmingly embraced the, the homosexual lifestyle, they've legitimized it, they're okay with it, and, and, and everybody is on board with this. And so they just keep pushing the envelope. Well, the truth is, there really wasn't a way for the, the, the American people to express their, their concern that we were taking an entire month and just going to 
propagandize and shove down everybody's throat a lifestyle that you are not only going to quote unquote be tolerant of, you are going to accept it, you are going to embrace it, you are going to promote it, you are going to be for it, whether you want to be or not, because we literally are going to stick it in your face 24-7 with movies, with entertainment. You can't go to a sporting event during the month of June and not see the logo. You won't be able to go to an amusement park and, and not have your children exposed. I mean, this was a full-on, and it, and it just wham! And of course, we've gotten to the place where that no longer was enough. So now comes the transgender. We have drag queens reading to kids at story time in schools at the public library. We even have major so-called Christian denominations, and I really call them apostate, uh, like the United Methodists that uh, all through the South have been having drag me to church Sunday, where they're having drag queens come in and tell kids Bible stories. Are, are you kidding me? I recently saw a clip of a debate where a group of transgender people are saying, listen, listen, God made me this way, and God doesn't make mistakes, so it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Wait a minute. You, you said it yourself. God doesn't make mistakes. Genesis chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created male and female. Created he them. In other words, he created two genders, male and female. And when you're born, it's decided. You're a boy, you're a girl. When you say, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body, what you're actually saying is that God made a mistake. Bum, ba -dum, bum. There is nothing in scripture that says God creates trans in-betweeners born in the wrong bodies. No, no, nay, nay. That is complete fabrication, man-made. And so we are bastardizing the Bible and Christian doctrine. And I think, by and large, the American people have not just simply had enough, and that was why there was this immediate backlash against Dylan Mulvaney, who, by the way, for all intents and purposes, is not transgender. What he is is a self-absorbed narcissist who has been looking for attention his whole life and has been dying to be some type of megastar for basically doing nothing except being Dylan. And so he becomes 365 days a woman. In my first day, I cried four times. Am I doing okay, girls? What woman talks like that? Answer, none. He's not a woman. He is a caricature dressing in his Mrs. Maisel outfits and prancing around like he's Eloise at, at the uh, 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 New York Plaza Hotel. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable that he's been given any type of credence or platform of legitimacy. And the reason this Bud Light pushback is sticking, the reason it's working, this is not just a pushback on Dylan. It's a pushback on the whole thing. Now, what do I mean by that? Am I saying that the American people are, are now wanting to criminalize and, and, and go after and, and, and destroy the lives of people who engage in, quote, the homosexual lifestyle? No, I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that the average American's attitude is, look, what you want to do privately, you know, go for it. But don't stick it in my face and tell me I have to accept it, embrace it, endorse it, promote it, and be okay with it. That's what the empty beer lines in liberal Boston mean. Guys, this is so funny and bizarre. Look at that. That is the Bud Light, that is every single Bud Light stand here at Fenway Park in Boston, right? We're at the Red Sox game. That's, that's what the Bud Light cans are. Holy crap. They're in trouble. I mean, I guess marketing has some questions to answer. The reason this is so big with the Dylan pushback and that this, this boycott, which is cratering, cratering 
Anheuser-Busch is so effective. It's not just about Dylan. It's about this whole alternative lifestyle woke crapola that the American people are by and large saying, what you want to do, do. Don't ask me to participate. Don't keep shoving it in my face. And don't you dare keep shoving this in the face of my kids and telling me it's okay and it's normal. It's not. And even Democrats in liberal places. You would think in a place like Boston, they would be lining up to buy the Bud Light, to show Bud Light, we stand with you. There are reports in the Daily Mail and other places that there are gay bars that are refusing Anheuser-Busch products. Bum, ba -dum, bum. See, I think there's a civil war going on that is not being reported about, even within the so-called gay community. See, we, we have on the one hand this, this guilt trip going on that any man that declares himself a woman, you've got to accept it, you've got to embrace it, you've got to promote it. That's why it's okay for men to now call themselves girls and compete in female athletics, and you have certain lesbians out there, like Megan Rapinoe and Brittany Garner, who apparently didn't learn a thing in that Russian prison out there saying, yeah, it's okay for trans women to compete in female sports. Yeah, we'll see how you feel about that, Brittany, when, you know, the entire... LA Clippers decide, you know what, it would be so much easier just to go pound on WNBA teams than stay here in the NBA. And what if the entire LA Clippers declare themselves trans, join the WNBA, and then put a beat down on Brittany Gaynor and the rest of the WNBA players? Yeah, Drew Barrymore bowing at the feet of Dylan Mulvaney. And there are women like Megan Kelly who are standing up saying, that's enough. She's got a new t-shirt out that says female. It's written in the Coca-Cola script, and under it says the real thing. Boom! I also love the hat she designed. <laughs> Make women female again. It's, it's great. It's great. Because see what's happened now? You've got psychologists and everybody telling any, shall we say, young man who has an effeminate side, well, you're not gay, you're trans. See, the homosexual community is losing ground to trans. The Gay Pride Parade last year in New York City had representation of the entire gay community as its, as its leadership, with one exception. They had lesbians. They had trans. They didn't have a single gay man on the board. So gay is not the thing anymore. Trans is the thing. So there's a there's a civil war going on within that community. It's really interesting. And the gay community is still, again, proof positive that this Dylan Mulvaney backlash is about more than just that, but it embraces the whole LBGTQ messaging. Remember last summer the movie Bros was going to be the first gay romantic comedy to be released in mainstream theaters because gay had gone mainstream and nobody went to see it. And the director and creator of the movie who initially told straight people, stay away, this is ours. And the movie tanked, tanked, tanked. Lost the studio hundreds of millions of dollars when you factor in not just the cost of production, but promotion, distribution. And then they, what do they do? They come out and they start yelling at heterosexuals like me. Why didn't you go see it? You're homophobic. I didn't go see it because I, I don't relate to it. it I, I don't care. I, I really don't want to watch a bunch of dudes making out with each other. Show that in a gay porn theater. Oh, that's right. You're mainstream now because everybody embraces you. The fact that nobody went to see your movie proves you aren't mainstream. The majority of the country does not embrace what you're doing. They'll tolerate it. They're not going to persecute you. They're not going to punish you. But they're not going to promote it either. They're not okay with it as far as saying, I got to accept it. I got to embrace it. I got to be for it. And the American people have said, no, no, nay. And that's why 
the Bud Light beer lines are empty.